Hey, I'm Pastor Justin. And before we jump into worship, I wanted to give a special shout out to those of you joining us here online, especially if you're new to the online worship experience. And if that's you, here's a couple quick tips to take full advantage and engage. First, act just like you would for a regular service. Stand for worship, clap your hands, take notes during the sermon. All of the regular ways you'd engage at a worship service. Do them wherever it's possible. Second, ditch distractions. Silence your phone. Whatever can keep you dialed into all God is going to do. And lastly, church is about pursuing God with one another. And it's the same here online. So throw this link to a friend as an invite and be sure to join us in the chat where hosts are ready to pray for you at any time and all of us are ready to worship together. So let's do just that starting right now. Praising and worshiping our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Good evening, City Life. We want to welcome you, whether you're here in the sanctuary, you're joining us online. We want to welcome you, and we invite you to stand as we enter into worship. How good and pleasant it is when the sons and daughters of God come together in worship. Lord, we thank you right now if you want to lift your hands and just say thank you, Lord. Thank you that you brought me here. You brought me here. You gave me another day to come and praise you, to come and bless you, to come and worship you. Lord, we thank you that you give us new life. You give us new life abundantly, overflowing, Lord. God, we thank you that our new normal with you, anyone remember saying our new normal at the beginning of the pandemic, right? God, God says your new normal is freedom. Your new normal is light. I have brought you out of darkness and into glorious light. I've given you all new things. The old is gone, the new has come. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you've given us freedom. You've given us light. God, you have lifted our burdens. Lord, even now, God, we pray that you would lift burdens right here in this room. And for anyone that's online, God, that you would lift every burden. Lord, we thank you, we worship you. We say all these things in your name, amen. All right, you can put your hands together. Right here. I was buried beneath my shame. Jesus, when I met you, I was breathing. I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb, Jesus, Jesus. till I met you. And then you called my name. You call my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Yes, into your glorious day. And now your mercy. Now your mercy has saved my soul and it's your freedom. Now your freedom. Jesus, when I met you, come on, sing that again, your mercy. Now your mercy has saved my soul. Oh, your freedom. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new. Jesus, when I met you, cause when you call my Glory. 
are rescued. We are rescued from the weight of sin. We are rescued from the weight of sin. We thank you, Lord. Good evening. Good evening, City Life Church. How's everybody doing tonight? Hey there, I got some sound. Hey everybody, how are you? Welcome to City Life Church. We're so glad you're with us tonight. If you're joining us in person, we're delighted to have you here. If you're here online, we are thrilled to have you with us. So thank you. It's a beautiful Virginia Saturday in May, and it's a great day to be here worshiping God together. If you're a guest of ours, we just want to say a special thank you for being with us. We hope that you'll text in to that number on the screen. If you're online with us, you'll hit that connect button. We'd love to start a conversation 
conversation with you, learn more about who you are, what brought you here, how we can serve you. But most of all, we just want to say thanks for worshiping with us. It's um, always an honor to have people join us, and we hope you experience the presence of a living God who has beautiful and amazing things to talk to us about tonight. And we hope that your ears are open to that. So we want to say thank you, church, for coming out in force last weekend. Take a look at this screen as we, if you missed our fifth Saturday outreaches, we just want to let you know what happened. It was a, such a good time. So give it up, church, for coming out. We were the fifth Saturday of every month. We will be going outside the walls of City Life and have an online-only service. We were in four different locations last Saturday, as you just saw there. And we were able to really do what we're about, right? And that's help bring Jesus to our city, make him easier to find. And so thank you for your participation. We also want to thank you always for your faithfulness and giving, because when we show up at those places, we don't show up uh, just with manpower, but we resource those ministries that we're coming alongside. We show up with, um, with ways to help that are financial. And so thank you, church, for being faithful to that and helping us um, be practical, right? And bringing Jesus to our city. And so you can give any time online. You can certainly give a physical gift if you're here with us at either of our info centers. You'll find a basket there. You can click that giving button if you're joining us online. But thank you for your faithfulness, and we are continuing to be faithful with those funds to serve Jesus here in our city. So a couple of things happening tonight and this week I want to let you know about. If you're with us tonight and you missed last week's online service, maybe you saw it and you're excited to be here to join us, but we are going to be having an interest meeting dinner provided immediately following our service for anybody who might be interested in learning more about taking a missions trip to Niger, Africa. So we have representatives from Link with us tonight. And I really just want to camp on this for just a minute because I think there's some people here who have said, I would love to be part of something like that, but you've never seriously considered what it might be. So this is a, this is a no pressure invite. We'll feed you some pizza, answer questions, just the practical how-tos of where to get started when you're thinking about something like that. We are going to be partnering on going with Link and um, find out more about what they're doing in Africa, It's or in, specifically in the nation of Niger. And so we're just so excited about what God's doing there and how we can come alongside of them. So maybe you came tonight and you think you have other plans, but God is nudging your heart to pause your plans for 30 or 45 minutes and join us after church down in our cafe area so you can begin, kind of take a, a faith step, right? God, would you ever ask me to do something like this? What would that look like? So we'd love to have you learn more with us tonight. And then also, church, we want to let you know that we um, are, are honored to be supporting and coming alongside and want to make you aware of Christ for All Nations. They're a global international ministry that brings Jesus all over the world, but they are specifically specifically targeting the East Coast in these next few years, and they're doing evangelistic crusades. And they're a well-known organization. It's a well-run organization. We're excited to that they're coming to our city. And in a couple of weeks, they're going to be right here at Todd Stadium on Saturday nights after church. We can go hang out with them and um, or that Friday night, that Sunday night. But we wanted to let you know that website, americashallbesaved.com. If you're interested in coming alongside what's happening with them, learning more, there's great information at that website. They probably need volunteers, I'm guessing. They need prayer support, and they just need Christians to come out and help them do what they're doing, and so we would invite you to be a part of that. So also, just a reminder, we do have communion tonight, so we hope you grabbed your element on the way in. We are going to ask you, we're going to be doing some something specific with it tonight, so we'd ask you to keep it unopened um, and make sure you have it, and if you're joining us online, grab whatever elements you're going to use because we want you to be a part of what God's all about in our service tonight. So church, we're so glad you're with us. Did you know that the Bible tells a story and you have a part to play? Our hope is that by joining us tonight, 
whether online or in person, you further discover the part that God has for you to play in making Jesus easy to find in the world wherever you are. Be sure to check out our events promo page on our website for all that's coming up in the life of our church. Hey, City Life. One of the organizations we support monthly, ECHO, works to connect families in crisis to caring communities. They do work alongside foster families as nearly 3,000 kids are added to the system annually in Virginia. And they also come alongside some of the over 100,000 families in Virginia that are investigated annually and on the brink of fracturing. Now, one way that churches get involved and come alongside their ministry in a super practical way is by holding diaper drives. And this May, here at City Life, we'll be doing just that. Now for diaper sizes, they can take preemie all the way to adult sizes. And they welcome open packages if your own kid recently outgrew a size. But the most commonly used and requested sizes are four, five, and six. And pull-ups are preferred, but not necessary. But that's it. Those are the details. And let's run with them this month. Drop off diapers every Saturday this month in the container in the foyer. And let's leave a simple yet profound impact on countless precious families here in our region. Hey City Life, I'm excited to let you know that we will be having our next Discover City Life dinner following our service on Saturday night, May 20th. And if you're asking what is Discover City Life, then this is probably for you. Discover City Life is our time to come together to tell the God story of what he's been doing with and through City Life and to meet folks that are asking the question about what City Life is all about, to learn more about our church family, to learn more about our story, and to invite you to have a seat at the table. So we would love to have the opportunity to share that time with you. We will be having a family-friendly, casual dinner following our service again on Saturday, May 20th. And you can RSVP to that link on the screen to let us know you'll be there. And we hope that we get to meet you, greet you, and hear more about your God story. We know that it's no accident that God is fitly forming people and their stories and their giftings and contributions together to build his church. And so we would invite you to be a part of that here at the City Life Church. We hope you can make it. If you have any questions about our church, visit citylifeva.com or email us at info at citylifeva.com. Thanks for sharing your Saturday with us. Together, let's discover the part God has for each one of us to play. City Life, we invite you to stand as we enter back into worship. And I want to begin with a word, of, word from the, the Lord in Psalm 24. This is a Psalm of David. It says, The earth and everything in it, the world and all its inhabitants, belong to the Lord. For he laid its foundation on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not appealed to what is false and who has not sworn deceitfully, he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who inquire of him or who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Rise up, ancient doors. Then the King of glory will come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Rise up, ancient doors. Then the King of glory will come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of armies. He is the King of glory. And so right now, God, we thank you that you are the King of glory. You are the Lord of lords. You are the God of angel armies. There is no one like you, Lord. And so we lift up our hearts even now, God.
and we say, come in. Come in, King of glory, and have your way. God, would you give us clean hands and pure hearts that we would seek you, that we would seek you, God, with our whole selves right now, right now, even now, surrender and let the King of glory come in. That's our prayer tonight, that we would surrender. We would surrender our agenda. We would surrender what we think things should look like. And God, we would allow you to come in. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? We can praise you. Yes, we'll dance in your presence until you come 
Yes, we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Yes, we will. We will sing hallelujah until you come again. We give you our worship. Yes, we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Oh, we will. We will sing hallelujah until you Yes, we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Yes, we'll dance. Yes, we'll dance in your presence. 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 We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. You are the King of glory. Fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Yes, He is the King. We just want to be with you. Tell him who he is. The King of glory. Feel this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Come on, stay right there. King of glory. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Sing, King of, King of glory. Feel this place. We just want to be with you. 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 Yes, Lord, right now we say we just want to be with you. And wherever you are in your worship right now, whether you are worshiping in joy, whether you're worshiping in lament, God wants to meet you right there. He wants to meet you right there. He is the King of glory. He is worthy of all of our praise. All of our worship. So we're going to sing that one more time. Because he is the King of glory. And we can never grow tired of telling him who he is. We're going to do it into eternity, forever and ever, telling him who he is, crowning him. So right now we have the opportunity while we're on earth to crown him. It's going to look different when we worship in heaven, right? And so right now we have a special opportunity to worship God on earth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing to be able to worship you. He is King of glory. Fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you.
We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you one more time. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Yes, Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you, God. And as we sing, fill this place, God, our prayer is that you would fill our hearts. Fill our hearts, God. Fill our hearts, Lord. And we know in Matthew, Jesus says, I am gentle and humble in heart. I am gentle and humble in heart. The Savior of the world says, I am gentle and humble of heart. And so God, we pray that we would be gentle and humble of heart. God, that that, that, that would be our story. That when people think of us, they would think, what a gentle, humble son or daughter, man or woman. God, we pray even now, Lord, that we would give our hearts to you. God, I pray that we would not hold anything back. And as a sign, Lord, we just lift, we lift our hands, God, we open our hands, even as a sign, Lord, to say, You can have everything. You can have all of me. All of me, Lord. I don't want to hold anything back from you. And if you want to kneel or bow before the Lord as a sign of humility, come and do that. God, make us gentle and humble in heart, Lord, that we could receive from you. And I know there's some people in here who are broken, who are hurting who are lamenting. And just this morning, some some ladies got together on Zoom at the well and we were talking about the spiritual power of lamenting. There's a spiritual power in lamenting. The world can't lament in the way that we can lament. We can cry out to the Lord We know he hears our cry. And God, in in, uh, 2 Kings, God says to King Josiah, I have heard your voice because you wept bitterly, because you cried before me, because you had a humble heart. And so right now, Lord, we just give you our hearts. God, we don't want to hold anything back. We don't want to hold anything back. Love with no reservations. You're not looking for perfection. And there's no need in me pretending. Oh, I'll give you everything. I'll give you everything. And you deserve my full attention. Nothing less than my devotion. Speak to me and I will listen. And I'll give you everything. I'll give you everything. And oh, oh, you can have my heart. You can have my heart. Set me free. 
free from selfish motives and search me search me till there's nothing hidden i'll give you everything i'll give you everything oh oh you can have my heart you can have my heart oh oh you can have my heart you can have my do another song in just a minute, but Pastor David had something he felt like God put on his heart for him to share with us. I just felt like as we were worshiping tonight, um, God kind of brought a picture and a memory to mind, and I don't know if it's because I was, we're sitting here, you know, worshiping so close to my mom. Usually my mom is <laughs> worshiping uh, elsewhere in the sanctuary, but she was near me tonight, and it brought to my memory of growing up uh, we used to go to this like super Pentecostal church, um, super emotional and, and you know, all of the running around and flags and everything, right? And so I remember even as a little kid, memories of my mom worshiping and just crying in worship. And I remember as a little kid thinking, that's really embarrassing. <laughs> like mom, pull it together, okay? And um, but I'm so grateful, and I don't know if I've ever said this to you, Mama, thank you for that example, because it showed me and it, and it taught me as a young boy, even though I didn't understand it at the time, and it took me many years until I was in middle school and high school, the lesson that the presence of God 
is a safe place to cry. And just at, that memory came to mind and like seconds afterwards, Madeline used the word lament and, and continued to just kind of harp on that theme. And so I just, I felt pressed to come up here tonight and encourage you that the presence of God is a safe place to cry. I was at a funeral earlier today and even in the presence of people who were mourning and lamenting, we were there with the purpose of lament. And even in that environment, I found myself holding back tears and thinking, oh, I'm not here, not right now. This isn't the space, this isn't the time. And so I, I wanted to just say explicitly tonight, if you've been holding back tears, if, if maybe tonight you're walking through something and you're like, oh, I wish I had the space. Or maybe you're here tonight, you're a visitor. Maybe you haven't been in a long time. I don't know your situation, but maybe you're here and you're thinking, yeah, I wanna cry, but I don't really know these people like that. I just wanna encourage you, it's not about the people in the room, it's about the God whose presence is here. And so I wanna encourage you with this verse in Exodus 2, one of my favorite passages of scripture, just before that famous passage that we all know, right, of Moses and the burning bush, before God met with Moses, before God sent Moses to free the people from slavery, this is what preceded that famous story. It says in Exodus 2, 23, years passed and the king of Egypt died, but the Israelites continued to groan under their burden of slavery and they cried out for help. And their cry rose up to God. God heard their groaning and he remembered his covenant promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So my encouragement to you tonight is to cry out because when you do, come on, your cry rises up to heaven and he hears it. And not only that, but he, he actually puts into motion the very things that you might need uh, for your comfort, for your salvation, for your freedom. Come on. Come on, you can clap for that. It's good. So, Father, as we just go back into this last song, I just, I pray for every person that that word of encouragement was for, whether they're in this room or whether they're a part of our online family. They would let those emotions that your Holy Spirit is stirring inside of them to just let them have their way. Let them have their way. In Jesus' name, come on, let's worship together. Oh, you can have my heart. You can have my heart. And oh, oh. anything else but you. Only your presence will heal us, God. Only you can make us new. Nothing 
else Nothing else in me I just want you And nothing else And nothing else Nothing else will do I just want you And nothing else And nothing else fifth grade and you're going to be leaving for workshop in just a minute, I'm going to invite you to stand back up. If you're second through fifth grade, and if you've got your communion elements, if you're going to be taking communion, we're going to do communion just for you, and then we're going to be doing it for the grown-ups a little bit different. Does that make sense? So you can help your, your child if you've got their elements, you can open those for them. And if they're not going to be taking communion, that's okay too, because we're just going to pray over them in just a minute. But I just, if, 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 if you're one of those little ones who's standing, I, I want you to think of someone that you know who loves you very much. Maybe your mom or your dad, a teacher, me, Pastor Vanessa, somebody that you know, when you think of them, you think, oh, they love me so much. And you know that because when they see you, they have a huge smile on their face. When you come into the house or you come into a room where they are and they're like, oh, that, that, right? It's a fancy word. It's called countenance, right? It just, it just brightens. It's because they love you. But what I want you to know is that every day Jesus sees you and he has that same look on his face because he loves you that much. And 2,000 years ago, he showed us how much he loves us because he died for us. And that's why we take these elements. This juice and this wafer represents his life that he gave for you and me so that we could have forgiveness, but also so he could teach us how to forgive others. 
which because you're a little kid, you also know that's important, that you've had times where you've had to accept an apology from a friend or maybe a sibling. So if you're a parent of one of these little ones, if you could just help them get these elements out, if they could just get that wafer in their hand, I'm going to have them take it in just a moment. And then if you are a parent of one of these little ones, if you could just put your hand on their shoulder because we just want to pray over them before we dismiss them. But you can eat that wafer and drink your cup while I'm praying for you. So if you're with them, you can just help them do it. But eat that wafer and drink that cup. Father, we pray for every little life that's standing in this room right now. We pray for every little life that's even part of our online community, those, that, that little child that's sitting in the living room with their parents or in the kitchen on the back deck. Father, I pray that you would help them see for the rest of their lives the smile that's on your face when you see them. I pray that they would always feel seen by you, that they would, they would always feel loved by you, they would always feel celebrated by you, they would always feel cherished by you that they would always know that they are your greatest treasure. Help us to receive the forgiveness that you so freely give, but help these little ones, even now, as freely as they offer forgiveness, I pray that when they're old like me, they'll forgive just as easily then as they do now. In Jesus' name, come on, and everybody said together, amen. Can you, just, can you just love on these little ones with a little bit of a clap? Come on, they're so special to us, right? All right, we're going to release you into workshop for the kids. So good. We're just we're just switching some things up tonight. We're just it's part of our part of part of our uh, it's summer's come and flow, I think, right? And then I think too with Pastor David didn't know that we were going to be switching things up tonight, so that word that God put on his heart is is going to be so suited. It's he I think God was preparing your heart for this moment that's coming, for, for, for some of you to give you permission to step into this moment that maybe is going to take some courage for you. Isn't it good that God loves us enough, right, just to get to get us ready? I, one of the things I love about when I read in the Gospels is that Jesus was never in a hurry with hurting people. You ever notice that? Because he was busy. He had a lot of things to do in the short time that he was here on this earth. And as you, as you read through the Gospels, there, there, was, there was a plan for the day and, and, and sometimes much to the frustration and the consternation of the disciples who were traveling with him, he was just never in a hurry with hurting people. And, and you know, we're not going to be in a hurry tonight for people who might need that same kind of touch from Jesus, who's just as alive now as he was 2,000 years ago. This has been a, whirl, a whirlwind 24 hours for us. Our oldest just got engaged in Blacksburg, proposed to his girlfriend. I know last night. So we've been running the roads, running the roads. And, uh, and while we were on this trip, I, I just kept getting a picture of someone standing in this sanctuary with communion elements in, in their hand. And as, as I was talking to God about, well, what, what does that picture mean? What, what do you want to do? And 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 in the and he gave me two words. The the fir, the first was pain, and then the and the second one was sorrow. So I'm going to ask you to trust me a little bit here, which I know is not it's not easy to be conspicuous in front of people. If you're watching online, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. I'm going to ask you to pretend that you're that you that you're in here, and it's going to require your imagination a little bit more later. But if if you're in here right now, and you would say. Fred, when I hear the word pain and sorrow, those are words that speak to something that's happening on the inside of me. I'm just going to invite you to stand with your communion elements where you are. I'm just going to invite you to be conspicuous. Yeah, that's good. And, 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 and this is what we're going to do. I just I want to talk about this first. I want you to I want you to remain standing because I, I want you to feel something. You with me? This verse right here is so powerful. In Luke twenty two nineteen, 19, it says, He took some bread, this is Jesus, right, at the Last Supper, and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, now we push the 
presentation of the bread and the presentation of the juice all together in the same moment. And, I, and I'm not saying that's wrong. But 2,000 years ago, they did not happen in the same moment. Because if you keep reading in Luke, what you find is that it says, after supper, after supper, he passes the cup. Now, a lot of that is because communion comes from us, from the Jewish tradition of Passover. And Passover had very specific times when things were, were, were done. And, and, but I want you to see something because I believe that there's a picture that he wants you to get tonight. Is, is that the bread and the cup happened at two different times for many reasons, but one is I believe that Jesus was trying to help you to see that he's creating a space for you to sit with him. Because the disciples, when they broke that bread, they didn't get up and go away and come back, right, when the cup was ready. They sat at that table with Jesus that entire time, being in his presence. Can I just, there are times where we need to just linger in the presence of Jesus Christ. We just need to be with him. And I believe that in this communion tonight, that God is creating a moment between the bread and the juice, so to speak. It's a prophetic picture for you to just sit with him because every time in Scripture where people sit with Jesus, there's healing that comes. There's healing that comes, and he still heals today. So, so all of us who are not standing and this is where if you're, if you're part of our online family, it's going to take a little imagination, but I think you can still do it. Those of us who are seated, I want you to find in this room at least three people who are standing. And the first person that you go to, I want you to go to somebody that you don't know. You, you with me? And if you know everybody, then just, that's okay, right? You, 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 but if, if you don't know everybody, start with someone you don't know. And, and I want you to trade cups with this person. And as you trade cups with them, this is what you're going to say to them. He, he heals your pain. And, and I want people to hear that a few different times. Are you tracking with me? It's going to take a little bit. So if you're standing, you're just going to stand there and receive from people. And that people are going to come to you, and you're just going to trade cups with them. And then they're, just going to, they're going to say, he, he heals your pain. And the band's just going to keep playing, and we're going to do this together. I'm caught up in your presence Oh, I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything, but more than anything that you can do, I just want you, I'm caught, I'm caught up in your presence, oh, I just want to sit here and in this holy moment I never want to leave oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus you don't owe me anything but more than Nothing 
This is important. Christianity can't just be a religious ritual that you move through throughout your life. Jesus is alive. He is real. And, and he wants to sit with you. And, and part of these experiences that we're going to do on occasion as a church, it's a little bit out of the ordinary, a little bit out of the flow. I, I think God interrupts our routine because he's trying to show you what you can do on your own. You don't have to be here at 311 Selden Road to have encounters like this. It's just about pausing the busyness of your life, finding a quiet place, and just thinking about Jesus. And I'm telling you, he'll begin to talk to you, and he'll begin to touch you. And just as David shared, if you let those feelings, if you give yourself permission to feel, I'm telling you, there's healing that he wants to do in your life. Jesus, I'm so glad that you broke that bread and, and it wasn't until after supper that you passed the cup. Reminding us to take time out of our day to commune with you, to take time out of our day to sit with you. Because when we sit with you, there's healing that comes, that you heal our pain. All the brokenness, all the bitterness, all the unforgiveness, the pain that has been inflicted upon us, and then sometimes the pain that we inflict upon ourselves. There is a touch from your hand that you bring. Let's eat the wafer together. Let's drink the cup. Father, I pray for the people that part of our online church family that weren't able to be in here with us as we were exchanging elements, but I pray that you gave them some creative imagination. I pray that they imagined themselves in this room holding out their elements and that people were coming up to them over and over and over again, saying that same phrase to them, he heals your pain. Father, we understand that some pain, we've got to walk it out, the healing. There's times where we need to spend time with a therapist or with a trusted friend or a pastor that's all part of the journey, but we also believe with all of our heart that there is a touch that comes from you that is supernatural, that does something that none of the work can do, that there's a touch from your hand that, 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 that none of the practical things can reach. So I pray for the people that were willing to shed some tears tonight, that they would feel that part of their heart, even now, even though it's still tender, that they would feel that wound just just a little bit beginning to mend come on in Jesus' name everybody said together amen it's so good that's so good now i'm gonna no not yet i'm gonna just i'm just getting rid of the elements hey the band's gonna keep playing a little bit more because we just we want to talk about something every every week we're talking about the gospel you with me every week we're talking about the gospel such an important part of who we are as a church and as a congregation. And, and again, because of so many people are tuning in online, hundreds of people every weekend, we, the people all over the world, right? We just want people to have an opportunity to hear what the gospel is and what it means. And so we're calling it a, a welcome home moment. And, and we call it a welcome home moment because when you make a vow of devotion to Jesus, you're born into God's family. And we believe that in that moment, all of heaven is saying to you, welcome home. 
So these welcome home moments aren't about welcoming you to this church. We, we want you to feel welcome, but more importantly, we want you to feel drawn into God's family. We believe that every person's deepest desire and greatest need is to know God and to be known by Him. It is an ache inside of the human soul. And that creates a dilemma for us because we're born into this world separated from God. And no matter how good we might think that we are, no matter how good of a life we're trying to live, we all have regrets. As we look back over to the story of our lives, there's memories that we have that create this twinge in our heart. If I could do it over, I'd do that differently. Maybe I wouldn't have said those words. I wouldn't have done those things. Regrets, what the Bible calls a sin. And you and I, at some point in our lives, we're going to breathe our last. We're going to stand before God on a day of judgment, and we're going to have to give an account for every one of those regrets. We're going to have to give an account for our lives. And it breaks our heart to think that there will be people on that day of their day of judgment that that will be the very first time that they have a sense of knowing God and being known by Him. And, and we want to change that as a church. We want to change that as a church. Because in God's justice system, the smallest regret is worthy of eternal death. But this is why we call it the gospel, which means the good news, is that Jesus comes in and He says, I did something to fix all that. A favorite verse of ours in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, if anyone's in Christ, they're a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. That's Jesus saying to us that he literally can change us on the inside. And that 2,000 years ago when he died on that cross, he made forgiveness possible for every regret that we've ever had, for every regret that's still waiting for us, for every mistake that we're still going to make. He says to you and me, I can forgive that. He changes us and he forgives us as we keep making mistakes along the way. It's good news, isn't it? And, and then he says, so that when that day comes for us and we stand before God on that fateful day, on our day of judgment, we don't have to stand in fear of condemnation. We can stand with a humble hope of expectation that there is an invitation to step into eternal life with Jesus because of the forgiveness that he offers. So every Saturday, we're just telling that story because we want people to hear, and in hearing, they might have a chance to believe, and in believing, they might have an opportunity to make their own vow of devotion to Christ, as many of us have done throughout our lives, because someone took the time to tell that story to us. So if you're here in this room, if you're part of our online community, and as you look back over the story of your life, you can't find a moment in time where you've made a vow of devotion to Jesus, then I'm just going to invite you to borrow my words as I pray for you. Father, I believe that Jesus is your son, that he died for my sins, that he rose from the dead, conquering sin and death. And so on this day in May, I make Jesus a vow of devotion to you. I accept the forgiveness that you offer. I invite you now to begin to do that work of transformation with me on the inside. I want to become the person that you've created me to be. And on this day, for the rest of my life, I live with the hope and the expectation that it's not condemnation that's waiting for me in the end, but it is an invitation into eternal life in heaven with you for all eternity. In Jesus' name, come on and everybody said together, amen. We love the imagery of the Bible that talks about being born again, right? That when you make a vow of devotion to Christ, you're born into God's family and all of heaven says to you, come on, welcome home. Welcome home. It's good. Come on, can you say a special thanks to the worship team putting in some overtime in the service? It's good. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Hey, this is a little giveaway for Nolan because he makes the best cookies that any dude I ever know has made. He's in our life group. And uh, so these are sign up for snacks, and I'm an oatmeal raisin guy, right? As every cookie connoisseur should be. But he made some chocolate chip cookies, but they weren't regular chocolate chip cookies. They also had butterscotch chips in them and sea salt. 
on top. I know, I know, and then I'm not sharing the ones that are left over. We absconded those and took them into the office, and I had one this week for the first time. I didn't have one at our, at our life group, and I was like, oh, my goodness. This deserves a giveaway right here. Nolan the baker. All right, so he's on the hook now to be making those for when we gather to eat together. Hey, I just we're, we're just going to dip our toe in the water a little bit with a sermon recap because I just want to keep our hearts connected to the series. We have Mother's Day coming up, which is going to be a standalone, and then we're going to circle back into this. And then, you know, God had other plans tonight, right? So good, isn't it? He just, he just slows things down for people sometimes who need a touch from him. And we are going to be a church that's always intent on not being in a hurry with people who are hurting. We're in this series called Shema. This is an important part of who we are as a church because we, we, we don't want to just find the grace of being born into God's family, which we just talked about, and stay spiritual infants all of our days. We want to grow and mature. And, and, and so we, we have some strategies that we feel like that God has given to us as a church that we're trying to teach you for how that growth and maturity happens. And so the, the, the word that the Bible gives us to talk about this journey of growing and maturing spiritually is the word discipleship. The word discipleship. So when, when, when I say the word discipleship, Somebody raise your hand as I'm walking around. What, what, what is a word that comes to mind when you hear me say discipleship? Praxis. Well done. I know. That's good. Just want to city life zones. Somebody else, what's a word that you think of when I say discipleship? Jocelyn? What? Twelve, yes. Twelve. Follow. Somebody else? Anybody in the middle? But Somebody up top? Oh, in the balcony, yes. You're going to have to say it loud. Discipline. That is very good. I know. You should be clapping for that little one. Come on. Brentley. Yes. Yes. You're doubling down on the 12. I like it. Somebody else. Another one. One more. Anybody? Anybody? David? Fisherman. Yes, you're hungry, aren't you? I know. It's that special food truck that sells. What's the food truck that does the fish? Got fish, I know, I know. See, I'm hungry too. Victoria, did you have one? Growth, I like it, growth, discipleship. It's this idea that the Bible gives us that we have a responsibility to become like the one that we're following. Jesus says, hey, through me, you can be born into our family But in many ways, that's really when the work begins. Grace brings us into the family of God, and grace keeps us in the family of God, and grace is a part of this journey of discipleship, but it also requires effort. Grace is not permission for us to say, okay, God, you do all the work and change me. He says, no, 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 no. Let me invite you into the process, discipleship. There are four areas that we're going to draw you into, as long as you call City Life Church your home, to do this journey of discipleship together with us. We want to be strategic. We want it to be practical. We want to have plans that we can put into your hands. We're, we've been in a 24-month. We're about a little more than halfway through a two-year plan. All of last year was about the gospel, right? We did the sermon series, the longest sermon series we've ever done in the history of the church, talking about this idea of the story. The Bible tells a story, and you have a part to play. So we did a whole year on the gospel. And, and now this year, in every single service, we're doing a little five-minute presentation of what the gospel is. So you can understand it, but also... The, you you can begin to make it your own so you can talk to other people about it. But this journey of discipleship is, is inviting you. You've got to spend the rest of your life in these four places. If, 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 if you're thinking about a home renovation, if that's a metaphor for you, th- these are the, the four phases of the project of your home renovation. Maybe you're, maybe you're a garage person. 
You're, you're building a car, right? And you divide that project up into four different parts of the project, but you've got to do all of them to complete it. Maybe you're a baker like Nolan, right? And, and you've got all this family that's coming over for the holidays, right? I, so when, when we're, when I'm a, I'm, I do not do any cooking in my home. I am a, I am a consumer, in my house. But I see Vanessa, if, if there's a lot of people coming over, she has a plan for all the different things that needs to happen for the meal to come together. All of those things need to happen for the meal to be complete. All of those things need to happen for the home project to be complete. If you're building a car, all of those things need to happen. Are you with me? Discipleship is the same way. All of these things need to happen for us to become like the person that we're following we already did in the beginning of the year, doxa, which is a Greek word that gives us this word, something that we trust in, something that we believe. So the way of Jesus' beliefs, and we introduced you to seven foundational doctrines of Christianity, but we don't just want to believe those things. We're asking the question, how do those things change? If that's new for you, you can catch that whole series on our YouTube channel. Right now we're in the series Shema. We're just a, f- a few weeks into it, but this is the way of Jesus' obedience, and we're going to talk about that in a, in a little bit more in just, in just a minute. And, and then Praxis, which Amy said, come on, nice, Amy, setting us up. We're going to get to that at the end of the summer, but if you've been part of this church for any amount of time, this has been a part of our church for many years. The way of Jesus' character, the whole idea about virtue, and then over the holidays, coming through the fall, we're going to settle in on the way of Jesus' peace, shalom. You and I are going to spend the rest of our lives doing these things. The way of Jesus' beliefs, the way of Jesus' character, the way of Jesus' obedience, the way of Jesus' peace, spending time in each of these areas throughout our lives causes us to move forward into this journey of transformation. Discipleship just doesn't have to be an idea. It can be a reality for us. It doesn't have to be a pipe dream. It doesn't just have to be something that's part of our our Christian lingo, but doesn't have any actual measurable meaning in my life. Uh, Ten years from now, I want to look differently than I do today. On the inside, I want to look more like Jesus. And I'm not going to get there unless I have a plan. I'm not going to get there unless I'm being intentional. And some of you know that because if you look back over your life over the last 10 years, if you're honest with yourself, you might say, you know what, Fred? I'm not too much different than I was 10 years ago. And it might be because discipleship for you has just been an idea but has not been a practice. And we want it to be a practice for you here at City Life Church. This idea of Shema, the way of Jesus' obedience, comes from this desire of wanting the reflex of my heart to be one of obedience to God. When you study the life of Jesus, there was an intuitive willingness for him to always say yes to the Father. He wasn't fighting with God. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he felt the weight of his destiny, right? What he, he talks to God, is there any other way? But then what does he say? No, but not my will, but yours be done. Right? The reflex of his heart is to one, is to just to say yes to the Father There's a scale that I've been showing you every week in this series about these three words, rebellious and reluctant and reflexive. All of us in different areas of our life, we fall onto the scale in different places. I want throughout the rest of my days to keep moving my heart towards this place of reflexive obedience to God. Then when I feel the nudge and the prompting of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit isn't bracing for an argument from me, right? He's expecting willingness on my part. He's going to find a soft heart and an easy yes. Look at this verse in Mark 4. Beginning in 38 to 41, it says, Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat. This is the biblical basis for napping right here, people. Just saying. In the back of the boat and for boating. Praise God. With his head on a cushion. And the disciples woke him up, shouting, Jesus, don't you care that we're going to drown? And when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the wave, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. And then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Listen to what it says. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Even the wind and the waves. Obey him. Let's go to the next verse. 
It's in Mark 3. It says, whenever those possessed by evil spirits caught sight of him, the spirits would throw them to the ground in front of him, shrieking, you are the Son of God. But Jesus sternly commanded the spirits not to reveal who he was. All throughout Scripture, you see that Jesus had authority over nature. He had a authority over demonic spirits. He had authority over, over sickness. And it begs this question. Are oceans and demons and illnesses and famines, are they doing a better job with obedience to Jesus than I am? Right? It's a, it's a hard question, isn't it? When Jesus stood up in that boat, the waves and the wind did not say, yeah, we're just going to keep on going, Jesus, but we appreciate the suggestion. The, the, the waves and the wind and the rain did, did not say to him, we're, we're going to do it our own way. E, even the demonic realm, right, the enemies of our soul, even though they might have resisted, every story in Scripture that we have is that eventually they had to yield to the authority of Christ. Is there something in me when Jesus is drawing me in a certain direction? Is there a reflexive obedience in me? Am I like the wind and the rain on the day of the storm that hears his voice and does his bidding? I would suggest to you tonight that one of the most telling measures of spiritual maturity in my life is my Shema. One of the most telling measures of spiritual maturity in my life is my Shema. Is am I a person in God's family that has a heart that is just prone to this idea of following after the prompting and the leading of the Holy Spirit. This is the series that we're in, in this next slide that's going to come up. If we're going to close the gap between listening and obedience, then we, we've, we've got to be willing to work through these five conversions. This is where it gets practical. This is where it, it, it gives you some tasks. Now, we've already done moral conversion. Tonight was going to be about intellectual conversion, but we're pushing that because of the time that we wanted to spend for people tonight to find that touch from Christ. So we're going to circle back to that, I think, in a couple of weeks. And then we're going to work through each one of these so many of us that have grown up into the church have only ever think of, of conversion as a moment when we make a vow of devotion to Christ. But that's just the beginning. That's the invitation into this journey called discipleship. And if our hearts are going to become reflexively obedient, then we've got to do the work of these conversions for our hearts to begin to change. Come on, stand with me. Now, I know what you're thinking when it comes to this trip to Niger, Africa. You're saying to yourself, I am never getting on a plane and going that far. And what I would say to you is, what I would say to you, give us a chance to change your mind in a few minutes, right? And, and if you walk out and you're still convinced, then you know what you get? Then you get a chance to eat some delicious pizza and talk to some good people. Talk to some good people, right? We, we just, we want to... Invite you at the end of this service, go get your kids out of child care. It's a child friendly environment, but there's food that's there. Even if you weren't planning on staying, we hope that you come. Even if you don't go to this church, if you live somewhere else, then you just come hear about the work that's happening there. There's incredible things that are taking place. Father, hmm. for the people that are standing now who were standing a few minutes before whether they're in the room or whether they're part of our online community, I pray that that healing that you began to work in their heart created some momentum that's going to keep moving them forward in this journey of healing. Help us to always be a church that refuses to be in a hurry for people who are hurting. Help us to take the time to stop, to listen, to pray, and to encourage. And for all of us, Father, find in our hearts 
find in our hearts a desire to be reflexively obedient to you. And where it's not, help us through this series learn many of the practical things that you, through your word, through scripture itself, teaches us how that transformation can come. Always find in us, oh God, a yes. In Jesus' name, come on and everybody sit together. Amen. Go get your kids, then meet us down in the cafe. We'll talk to you about Africa. Wasn't that an awesome worship experience we just had? Now, I know that you're watching at home or another location, and this online church platform may be new to you. You may be distracted by dinner prep or noisy surroundings, but I challenge you not to log off just yet. If you need prayer, we have hosts ready to pray for you. You can simply click the prayer button and somebody will be able to pray with you in a private chat. And whether you decide to stay for prayer or not, we hope that this isn't the last time you join us. We hope to catch you in person or right here next week at citylifeva.com backslash live stream. See you again soon.